Welcome back to the basics of sampling distribution. So this is sampling distributions one. When we keep in mind about a sampling distribution, what we're looking at is trying to get a handle on what the true proportion or true mean of a population is. For example, we wanna know the average height of an American. Well, we can't ask every American, and so our strategy is to ask enough samples of Americans that we get an idea of what the average of a bunch of averages of American heights are, okay? And so, um, We've got different words to describe these things. So if I can find the average of the whole population of the United States, that's going to be what's called a parameter. A parameter describes a population. So when I have a measurement that describes a population, that's called a parameter. When I describe something about a sample, that's called a statistic. And the way that we keep this straight is we have different symbols for these things. I'm gonna color code them for you. So I'm gonna make a little chart here. We're gonna talk about three different measurements that we can measure for both a population and a sample. The first is the mean, so we can find uh, the mean of a sample or the mean of a population. We can find a proportion of a sample or a proportion of a population, and we can find standard deviation. And we'll kind of walk through exactly what this means here. But let me color code them for us. If I'm talking about, um, I need one more box here. If I'm talking about a population, Okay, I'm talking about population. I'm gonna be using parameters. When I talk about the mean of a population, that would be the average height of the United, of people in the United States. I'm gonna use this symbol here. And when I drop down and I talk about not being able to measure everybody in the United States, so I take a sample of a thousand people, I'm gonna be using a statistic and I'm gonna use the symbol X bar. And so if you see in a prompt that X bar equals something, you know that you're talking about a sample, not necessarily the whole population. If I'm talking about a proportion, this would be for example, if I wanted to know uh, the proportion of people in the United States that have uh, a Netflix account. Well, I can't ask everybody in the United States, but if I could, I would use a lowercase p to represent the true proportion, the proportion of, excuse me, people in the United States that have Netflix on their computer. Well, when I can't ask everybody and I have to take a sample of 600 people uh, and I find that proportion, I'm gonna use what's called p hat. So p hat is um, a sample measurement that's used to measure the proportion in a given, uh, in a given sample. What about standard deviation? So standard deviation, I use the little sigma. I'm gonna do my color coding here. Little sigma to measure the entire standard deviation of the United States. And if it's a sample, I'm gonna use uh, the letter S. So that's how we make that distinction when we have a sample and when we have a proportion, or when we have a sample, or when we have a population, if we use a parameter or a statistic. Okay, so in the middle part of this box here, let me zoom out. In the middle part of this box, I wanna talk about the sampling distribution itself. So the sampling distribution. A sampling distribution shows the statistic found in all possible samples of size n. Meaning this, 
I want to take samples of 50 people. Um, I want to take samples of 50 people from the population of the United States. And so I have the sampling distribution. And instead of asking everybody in the United States, I take a bunch of samples of size 50 uh, in the United States. And what happens is I get a distribution that looks something like this. Okay, and so each of these dots represents the statistic for one sample. Meaning, it's not the average height of a person, it's the average height represented in a group of 50 people. Does that make sense? And so my last piece here is going to be uh, what's called what's about what's called an unbiased estimator. So a statistic uh, an unbiased if the mean of the sampling distribution, is equal to the parameter, okay? And so one of the things that we're going to have to kind of wrap our head around as we move forward here is the notion of sample size. And so as you can imagine, as my sample size increases, for example, I have that example about the United States, the height of the population of the United States. If I take samples of size two, there's a bunch of different samples, but if I do a sample of a size a million, um, it's gonna decrease the variability. So a sample size of two, you know, one out of whack height, either really, really tall or really short, uh, is gonna throw that statistic or throw that measurement off, the statistic that we're looking at. But if I have a big sample, then it's gonna kind of be uh, less variable as we increase sample size. So uh, increased sample size decreases variability. It's the same notion that we discussed earlier in the year when we talked about free throws, right? If I make my first free throw of the season, I have a 100% free throw per free throw percentage for the year. If I miss the second one, it drops down to 50, so wild variation. As I get toward the end of the season, I have a 1,000 free throws under my belt. If I miss one, it doesn't change it that much. So the, the larger the sample size, the less variable, uh, the less variability that we have. Okay, here's an example. So a good way to do check your understanding would be to pause the video here, try the example on your own, and then come back and walk through it as I explain it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rolling. The James family has five children, Jocelyn, Elise, Michael, Erica, and Sarah. So we want to complete the table by listing the 10 possible samples of size n equals two. So we're going to combine them two at a time to find the average of uh, the heights from people in the family. So we're going to try to do this a little bit um, systematically. So I'm going to represent these with J, A, M, E, uh, and S. So James family, if you picked up on that one. So my first combination will be J and A. My second combination will be J and M when I add up uh, 8 and 14, uh, I get 22, so the average would be 11. J and E would be an average of 12. J and S would be an average of 13. A and M, which would be uh, Elise age 8 and Michael age 14, the average would be 11 there. A and E, which would be 8 and 16, would be an average of 12. A and S, uh, which would be... Uh, 8 and 18, which would be 26, so the average would be 13. M and E would be average 15. M and S would be 16. E and S would be 17. So if we create a sampling distribution of the sample mean ages of sample size 2, let's label it. This is always going to be a really important thing that we do from now on, is labeling our graphs, telling exactly what we're measuring, what we're modeling here. So here's the sampling distribution. Uh, of x bar. 
As I go down the line here, I'm going to draw my line. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, uh, and these are x bar down here. Let me put in some dots here. And let's see, we have one on eight. We have two 11s, two 12s, two 13s, a 15, a 16, and a 17. All right, so you can kind of see where we have more dots is gonna kind of give us an indication of where our true mean uh, might lie. So what's the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean? So the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Uh, so that's going to be our mean of x bar is going to be equal to taking the mean of all the means. So the mean of the means. So that's going to be equal to 8 plus 11 plus 11 plus 12 plus 12 plus 13 plus 13 plus 15 plus 16 plus 17. Uh, and I'm going to divide that by 10 because I have 10 data values. And that's going to give me 12.8. And what we're going to measure the mean of the sampling distribution, so the mean of means against, is uh, the mean of the population, which is literally just add up all the ages and find uh, the total. So let me shrink this down just a, just a skosh there. Okay. And so if I just do uh, the mean of x instead of the mean of x bar, I'm going to have 8 plus 8 plus 14 plus 16 plus 18 over 5, because I only have 5 kids. And that's equal to 12.8. So in this case, those two are equal. So if the sampling mean is an unbiased, it says, is the sampling mean an unbiased estimator? We're going to say yes, uh, because... The sample mean matches the mean of the sampling distribution. Okay. And so suppose we had taken samples of size three instead of size two, would the variability of the sampling distribution of the sample mean be larger, smaller, or about the same? So the variability would be smaller. Now you might be thinking, well, but didn't we get, isn't an unbiased estimator? Didn't we get the same answer? We're not talking about that. Um, we're not talking about getting the average. What we're talking about is, would these be as spread out? No, they would, they would pinch to the middle because everything would kind of crunch to the middle. We'd have more data values because we'd have sets of three, right? So, but they would crunch to the middle. So the reason is when you increase sample size, sample size, the variability of the sampling distribution decreases. Okay, so that's the basics behind sampling distributions. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that each data point in a sampling distribution represents the mean of a sample, not an individual data point. And also, as you increase the sample size, the variability of the sampling distribution decreases and gets uh, more uh, it's more compact, so you get a better idea of where that true mean might be, okay? That's the basics of sampling distributions. Thanks for watching, guys. And